Let's look into the CAN Web in more detail. Here we have AP to AC uh, networking. The AP to AC networking mode are classified into layer 2 networking and layer 3 networking. So what's the difference between layer 2 and layer 3? Layer 2 refer to a data link networking, which in OSI just work on layer 2, and layer 3 is in network, network layer on OSI. So first, layer 2 network, AP are connected to AC directly or across a layer 2 network. As you can see from here, I have an AP, and this AP are directly connect to the AC. Okay, same go for here as well. So in between, they are just a normal layer 2 network, just a pure switch. Uh, the benefit of this is that they are very quick in deployment, and the AC can discover the AP very efficiently over a single broadcast domain. So it's simple, it's easy to configure, but there's only a problem. If let's say you are in the large area where there are multiple VLAN or multiple network, in this case, then you have to use a layer 3 network. So the difference on the layer 2 networking and layer 3 network is the intermediate device here. So in the layer 3 network, they may have a different VLAN. So here I have one VLAN and I have another VLAN over here. So I do need a router or uh, layer 3 uh, switch for this to work. So AP are connect to an AC across a layer 3. In actual networking, an AC can connect to dozens or even hundreds of AP, which is usually complex. In most cases, layer 3 networking is used on a large network, uh, which is true because if you have a large deployment, we cannot afford to have just one layer 2 uh, single broadcast domain. That will not be uh, so scalable. So for more scalability as well as a complex network, usually we go for a layer 3 network. But once you use a layer 3 network, you have to be careful because in this case on your AC, you need to configure the uh, APIP, you need to configure, you may have to configure DNS or you may need to configure the uh, default gateway. All right, so that is more configuration on layer 3, uh, but then the configuration here can be very scalable. Next, we look into the AC connection mode. On the previous slide, I mentioned that there are different modes in the CAT web. So this is the slide to explain to you what are the difference in the CAT web mode that we have. Generally, we have two CAT web mode, either it's in path or off path. In path is very simple. As you can see in this diagram, I have an AP1 going through the CAT web and the tunnel is terminating in the AC. So all the traffic is passing through from the AP all right, to the cat web, to the AC to go out. So all this traffic will be passing through this cat web. In the in-path networking, the AP, AC, and the core network are connected in a chain. So you can see that they are connecting in a chain. All data destined to the core layer pass through AC. So AC must be uh, very powerful. All right, so you must have enough uh, bandwidth in your AC. So in the in this networking, the AC also function as an aggregation switch to forward and process data traffic and management traffic of an AP. So the keyword over here is data traffic and the management traffic. Okay, so that is in path. Whereas off path, as you can guess, off path means that the data traffic doesn't really pass through the AC, but it's only the management traffic. So let's look into the off path here. In the off path networking, the AC connect to the network between AP and the core network. So as you can see here, we have the AC connect to the IP network. They still have the cat web, all right? So this cat web is mainly for control purpose. So the explanation is that it doesn't actually connect to the AP directly. So AP directly connect to the switch, but they form a cat web tunnel. This cat web tunnel is mainly to do the control or management traffic. All the data traffic is passing through like this. So the client or the SDA will pass through the AP going through the switch before it go into the control network. So the AC only control the AP for control purpose, such as the encryption, the password authentication will go through the cat web. Uh, tunnel. So that is the difference between in-path networking and off-path networking. Of course, that when using off-path networking, the traffic doesn't go through AC, so the bandwidth requirement on AC is not as great. Next, we look into wireless communication system. 
Now, this is the concept on how basic wireless work. In a wireless communication system, information may be images, text, sounds, or the light. The transmit device first apply the source coding to convert information into digital. That is what we call the coding. So as you can see from here, the coding is where I have all the text. For example, I have a text, I may have the uh, images. So this information have to be turned into binary and this binary uh, changing of this into the binary is called coding. Then for you to change this binary data, into something that you need to carry over the wavelength so we need to go through what we call the uh, modulation so this is the modulation so you have a data that's overlaid on the radio wave and this radio wave will be transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver so in between we have this uh, channel transmission media that is our radio wave and they also have a noise source Wi-Fi has channel coding to rectify this noise source once you reach to the receiver they go through the opposite of the modulation they call it as demodulation to take the data out from the overlay wavelength and then they do the decoding before they send to the receiver in this case we also call it as a sync so these are the basic concept of a wireless communication here we need to know uh, how this data is being transmitted what are these channels that are being use and how to improve the transmission so even we have a noise we can increase the quality of the transmission let's look into the detail now let's look into radio wave a radio wave is an electronic wave whose frequency is between 3 hertz to 300 gigahertz radio technology converts sound signal or other signal and transmit them using the radio wave so this is uh, the radio wave that we are referring to. So WLAN technology enable transmission of information by radio wave over the air. So currently, what are the uh, wave frequency we are using? Uh, remember, we always say that is 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. To be exact, the gigahertz is 2.4835 to 5.1, 5.35, and 5.725 to 5.85 gigahertz. So this is the exact uh, frequency. As you can see that we have a lot of frequency here, but I want you to take note that the frequency used by the WLAN is called ultra high frequency or UHF and uh, for the uh, 5 gigahertz, we call it as a super high frequency, which is uh, 5 gigahertz. And for this, we are using a standard of A, N, A, C and A, X and go for same go for 2.4, we have uh, 802.11b, g, n, and ax. So remember this uh, alphabet. So this is a radio wave. So next we look into the radio channel. So what is a radio channel? A channel transmit information and a radio channel is a radio wave in space. If you still remember that long time ago, we have a radio where we have a knob and we start to tune into channel. And this is what we call a channel. So given the radio wave are ubiquitous, the random number use of spectrum resources will cause endless interference issue. Therefore, in addition to define the usable frequency band, just now we are referring to 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, we also need to understand what is a channel. So wireless communication protocol must accurately divide the frequency range. So we have two range here. One is the uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency i have this range from the channel number one to channel number 14 as you can see from here so the 2.4 frequency band is divided into 14 channels with overlapping or non-overlapping relationship now overlapping means that if you see here carefully channel number one and channel number two you notice that this part here they are overlapping okay this is what we call overlapping but there are certain non-overlapping channel as well as you can see overlapping channels such as one two are interference uh, with each other but non-overlapping channels such as one and six so you can see this is one and this is number six uh, if you track this uh, signal you can see that they are non-overlapping so one and six can be together and as well as 11 1 6 11 they can be coexist without any interference but if you have 
AP that are placed very close together, we can't avoid the overlapping channel, especially those AP that is not within your control. Imagine you are staying in an apartment and your neighbor are all using an access point. This is unavoidable uh, problem. Then we also have a 5 GHz frequency band. Now 5 GHz frequency band is better because uh, it has a richer spectrum resource. So as you can see from here, we have 5170 MHz all the way to 5835 MHz. So we have a wide range of frequency to use. And beside that, you can see here that we have a 20 MHz band, 40 MHz band, 80, and for the AX, we can even go to 180 MHz. So the larger the number of MHz, the more bandwidth that you can carry. So this is a radio channel. Next in the wireless, we always hear the terms called BSS, SSID, and BSSID. So let's look into these uh, terms. First, we look into the BSS, which stands for Basic Service Set. So this is a BSS. So an area covered by an AP is called BSS. So as long as you have one AP in the middle, and this AP cover this location, we call it as a basic service set. STA, which is a station in the BSS, can communicate within each other. So for example, I have the, this gas and this gas can talk to each other through uh, the AP. All right? So because that they can actually talk to each other through the AP, so the gas can able to talk to each other. Next, we have this basic service set identifier or BSSID. BSSID, uh, in another term, is an identifier for the WLAN, which normally is the MAC address. So this is a BSSID, which is the AP access point MAC address. Then we also have a SSID. I believe that this one, most of you will know, uh, which is a service set identifier. So this is your ID that you can browse through your computer or your mobile phone. SSID is an identifier of a WLAN which represents by a string of character. SSID can replace BSSID to help user identify different WLAN because if I give you a bunch of uh, MAC address, it's very difficult for you to differentiate one AP to another. So we use uh, SSID. Alright, so now we look into uh, VAP. So what exactly is a VAP? So again, you can see the same diagram. Now I want you to focus on here, we have a VAP number one and VAP number two. So it looks like an AP1 and AP2 from two different AP, but actually it is not. V stands for a virtual. So in the early stage, AP support only one BSS, if multiple BSS are deployed, we need to deploy multiple AP. So which means that uh, many years ago, if I have two SSID, you need two access points. Now the disadvantage is it will increase your cost and occupy your channel resources. To resolve this problem, AP now support uh, creation of VAP. Then you ask, well, if let's say I have one AP having one SSID, uh, that is very normal. But why should I have one AP to have two SSID? The reason is because that you can see I can have one VAP for gas and I can have another VAP for internal because each of these will have different security profile. So that's the reason why we need to use a VAP even though physically we only use one access point. VAP is a physical AP can be virtualized into multiple VAP. Each of these provide the same function of the physical AP. Uh, typically, the maximum VAP that we can have is 16 VAP. Each VAP corresponds to one uh, BSS. In this way, one AP may provide multiple BSS that can have different SSID uh, specified. Uh, please remember that even you can configure maximum 16 VAP doesn't mean that you can go up to the maximum because you are still physically limited by one single access point. So if you do not need that many VAP, so restrain yourself to just create enough VAP in the environment. Alright, so we have another terms we call it as a ESS. ESS stands for Extended Service Set. So what is that? If you look into this diagram, you will notice that I have two BSSID. This BSSID and this BSSID. So I have two BSS. So literally, I have two access points. This is what it means by 
uh, ESS. Well, if I have two SS points and I have the same SSID, I need to roam between one AP to another AP. This is where the ESS come in. So ESS can be used to expand the coverage when a SDA moved from one BSS to another BSS and extended service set ensure that the station does not sense the change of the SSID. So you can see that we have the Huawei over here as an SSID and Huawei over here. So this is a roaming. So ESS is pretty important if let's say you work in a large scale uh, environment. So in a large scale virtual BSS that consists of multiple BSS with multiple, that consists of multiple BSS with the same SSID, right? So this is the ESS.